Hello, this is Elias from DPRMS. Welcome. In this demo video, we will take a look at some of the data loss prevention technology offerings in Office 365. This video is split into four scenarios. I will first show you how the DLP features works with Microsoft Exchange. Afterwards, we will take a look and see how it works with OneDrive for Business. Thereafter, we will have a quick look at SharePoint Online. And finally, a quick overview on how some of the reporting features works with DLP. Before I kick off, allow me to thank everyone from all around the world who are watching our videos. Do not forget at the end of the video to subscribe to our channel as there will be more demo videos as we move along. So what is data loss prevention technologies and why would you need it? Organizations, no matter the size, are in general regulated when it comes to how specific kind of information can be stored, transferred, or disclosed. It can be regulation by law or industry standards. Some examples that I can mention is the Data Protection Act here in Ireland, which regulates how personal data can be handled. This regulation is soon to be replaced by the new EU regulations. Besides national regulation, we have industry standards such as PCI DSS, which dictates how credit card details are to be handled in an organization. In this demo, I'm not going to lecture you on all the regulation and standards that exist out there, so I'm going to dive into the problem that many organizations face. You see, complying with all these standards and regulations can be a little bit of a challenge, and most of the time we are talking about the human factor. Meaning, you could be in violation of the law because a staff member by accident sends an email to an inappropriate user. It could be as well a document that accidentally is located in a wrong location. As an example, a file share which is suddenly available to everyone in the company. To be honest, there are loads of risks and scenarios that can play out which could put the company to a lot of problems with the law, the industry or the public. To get a better control of the information that circulates within or is being shared outside the organization, data loss prevention is something that you should take a look at. So, if you are an Office 365 customer and perhaps are using Exchange SharePoint OneDrive in your daily work and you have regulations to comply with, then you should be looking at enabling DLP functions that are included with Office 365. DLP in Office 365 works in a way that it can identify sensitive information across all these locations that I just mentioned. Information can be something like credit card patterns, PPS numbers, passport numbers, etc. As an example, if you're sending an email and the recipient looks a little bit fishy, then DLP would give you a warning. And the best part is that you can enable so that the user can send the email anyway to the recipient in case there is a business justification and you can later review that justification to ensure that everything is in order. Let me show you how this works. In our first scenario, we will demonstrate how DLP works with Microsoft Exchange. For that, we have prepared two companies, Nuvage and Archipolar. In this scenario, Wade Black will send two documents to Dana Moran, which works in the same company, and Melissa Price, which works in Archipolar. One of the documents contains sensitive customer details, and the organization do not allow for sensitive information to be sent to external users, unless, of course, there is a business justification. We will see how DLP in exchange works when Wade Black is to send this email. And the technologies we are using for client experience, Windows 10 and Office 2016 Pro Plus, email service, Exchange Online, and for the DLP service, Office 365 Data Loss Prevention. So, let's get started. In this scenario, Wade Black will send two documents to Dana Moran and Melissa Price. One of the documents contains customer details with credit card numbers. As he attaches the documents to the email, a policy tip appears. In this case, DLP has detected that the email contains an Excel sheet with sensitive information and that it is being sent to an unauthorized user, Melissa Price. Take note that there is an Alright button at the end of the message. This will allow Wade Black to send the email anyway. 
By clicking on it, Wade is asked to justify the reason for why this email can be sent to Melissa Price. Once he submits the justification, the email can be sent. Take note that there is now a new message on the email informing Wade that the email can be sent but that it could be reviewed later by the organization. As a matter of fact, we will later in this video see how it looks from an auditor's perspective. But before we get there, let me show you how DLP works on Microsoft OneDrive. In our second scenario, we will show you how DLP works with Microsoft OneDrive for business. Wade Black will upload two documents to a shared OneDrive. These documents contain sensitive information and the organization do not allow for sensitive information to be stored in this location. Wade Black will try to do this anyway and we will see how DLP works when active in OneDrive for Business. Before we start, a quick look at the technologies for client experience, Windows 10 and Office 2016 Pro Plus, storage service, OneDrive for Business and for the DLP service, Office 365, Data Loss Prevention. So, let's get started. As previously mentioned, Wade Black will upload two identical documents to a shared OneDrive. One of them is a Word document and the other one is a PDF document and they both contain credit card numbers. Let's take a look and see what happens when he drops the files into the shared OneDrive. A few moments later, take note that we have a red icon on the documents. Clicking on the document, we can see a policy tip and the item conflicts with the policy in your organization. Below that, we can see that there is an issue description where the user is informed that the document contains sensitive information and in this case, it is credit card numbers. He can either access the document and remove the sensitive information or he can resolve this by clicking on resolve. When clicking on the Resolve button, a new window pops up with two new options, Override Policy or Report an Issue. This gives him the possibility to provide a business justification or in case there is missing configurations in the policy and the document should not be classified as sensitive, then the user can simply report this to the DLP administrator. Just going to show you how it looks when opening the document in Word. At the top of the document, we can see that there is a conflict with a policy in the organization. What I think is impressive is that the same policy is linked from the OneDrive to the Word application. This is very practical because you can already inform a user that there is a conflict while the document is being typed. Now, let's take a look and see how DLP works in Microsoft SharePoint. In this scenario, Wade Black will upload two documents to a SharePoint site. The document contains sensitive information and the organization in this case do not allow for sensitive information to be stored on this SharePoint site. We will see what happens when he's going to do this anyway. Before we start, a quick look at the technologies for client experience, Windows 10 and Office 2016 Pro Plus, storage service, SharePoint Online, and for the DLP service, Office 365 Data Loss Prevention. So, let's get started. We will go right down to business and drop these two files into the SharePoint site to see what will happen. A few moments later, we can see that the documents are being marked with the red symbol. So, let's click on the file and see what is going on here. As we have already seen previously, a policy tip appears informing the user that it contains sensitive information. Clicking on the Resolve button, we are presented with two options to either override or report an issue. Let's open up the document and take a look and see what is going on. Take note that the policy tip is synced from the SharePoint site to Microsoft Word. 
and the user has the option to either remove the sensitive details or override it. Another cool thing that I want to show you is that Wade Black, if he by any chance did not recognize the policy tips, then there are emails being sent to him informing him that the files that he just uploaded will be restricted and can only be accessed by the owner. I will in the next scenario show you how you can use some of the reporting features within DLP to get a perfect overview of all the policy conflicts in your organization. In this scenario, Oscar Nelson is a compliance officer and his job is to ensure that the organization is compliant with regulations and industry standards. At first, we will see how DLP reporting can be presented through email. Second, we will see how it looks when accessing the compliance reports through the security and compliance section in Office 365. So let's get started. In this slide, Oscar Nelson will check the compliance mailbox which collects daily activities. We can see that there is an incident relating to an email being sent from Wade Black to Dana Moran and Melissa Price. This is the same email that was sent on our first scenario. We can see that the email is documented very detailed and Oscar Nelson can not only open the email to read the message, but he can as well open the attachment and have a quick look inside. We can also see that there is an email generated from the second and third scenario where we tested DLP for OneDrive and SharePoint. In this slide, I'm going to show you how you can get a DLP overview by accessing the security and compliance section in Office 365. So this is how it looks from an auditor's perspective. In here, you can see the data policy was breached, who was responsible with details about the breach. And as well, there is a severity field here. And this is dependent on how many, in this case, credit card numbers in total, a document email would contain. If you have more than 10 credit card numbers in a document, then the severity would be classified as high. In case you are interested to learn more about this, I'm going to provide you with a link with some more information about the reporting functions in DLP. So let's summarize this presentation. We saw that DLP works effectively across Exchange, OneDrive for Business and also SharePoint. You can by implementing the DLP policies, control and manage where sensitive information can reside. You can also monitor all the policy conflicts and keep track of all the incidents in the organization. And what I think is best with the DLP functions is that the policy does not have to be forced. You can give the user the option to override the policy, which allows for work to continue without any unnecessary interruptions. So how do I get data loss prevention? Let's take a look at the licensing first. Always double check the licensing with Microsoft or a Microsoft partner as terms and conditions can change from the day this video is being recorded. However, as of right now, we see that DLP is included in the E3 and E5 plan. And in order to take advantage of DLP, you have to as well consider your current technology stack. I'm providing you with a link below so that you can do some cross-checking before you decide to implement DLP in your organization. Before we finish off, you might have questions that we are not covering in this demo. So I thought it could be a great idea to provide you with some more useful links where you can get some more information about the upfield that hopefully will answer any additional questions that you might have. So thank you very much for joining us on another demo. As always, it is a great pleasure to have you with us. Here at DPRMS, we value your privacy and we help you with keeping your information protected. If you enjoy this video, like it, share it and subscribe to our channel. Until the next time, have a great day and I see you soon.